Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. We've got a great one for you today. We've got a little tab on the left hand side here with some vertical text on it. When I click on it, it's going to take me all the way down to my little contact form. Of course, you can link it to anywhere you want, but it's fixed position, so it's going to stay there at all times. It's not taking too much real estate up. Let's go back to the top and of course this will work perfectly on tablet and mobile also if I demonstrate quickly. Here it is on an iPhone SE. As you can see it stays on the side there or you can click on it. Send people wherever you want to send them. Let's have a look on a tablet. Try an iPad Air. There we are on an iPad Air. On the side there, well, we're already at a contact form. Let's go back up. As you can see, it's just hanging around the side there. They can tap on it. And it'll take them straight down to the contact form. Really easy to do. Let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. Okay, well, let's go down. And I'll delete this little module. And we'll start again from scratch. Let's hit the little trash can to delete it. Great. Well, as I'm going to use fixed positioning on this today, we can pretty much put it wherever we want. I'm going to pop it in the first available space, which is down under my little blurb module here. I'm just going to use a simple text module for this today. Inside, let's put what we want it to say. And of course, you can use this tab for anything you want. You can link it to any way you want. I'm just using a contact form for example. So I'm going to say contact. That's all I really want in mind. And you can just see it there to the left. If I move this over the way, there it is. Let's make it stand out a bit more. Just below we've got background. We've got a link there. I'll deal with that in a moment. Just below we've got background always under content here. I'm going to give it a black background. You should be able to see it. Let's make that text more legible by going in there. Hitting the little paintbrush will take you straight to it. I'm going to make it white in color. And I think I'm going to make it uppercase also. Obviously, you can change the font. Divi has a crazy amount of fonts up here. To audition one, just roll over it. It'll give you an example. I'm going to leave mine on the default today. Fantastic. Well, let's put this text module where we want it now, which is probably on the side. I'm going to have mine over here. You can put it wherever you want. I'll show you exactly how. Let's go over to the advanced. I'm going to go down to position. I'm going to flip it from the default to fixed. And you may think it's disappeared, but it's actually under our little nav bar at the top here. We've got a little grid here, and you can put it top left, middle left, which is where I'm going to have mine today. As soon as I do that, it's actually popped it in there, as you can see. I can put it on the bottom right, down there. Flip it over this side, wherever you want it. Just put it wherever you want it. I'm going to have mine middle left right there. Okay, I want a little bit of space either side of the C and the T there. So I'm perhaps going to give mine five pixels all around. Let's go to our design here. We'll find that down in spacing. I'm just going to give it adding top and bottom. I'm going to make it five everywhere. Just put in the five. It'll put the pixels for you. And do the same for the left and right. We can always adjust this later if we don't want it. That's kind of okay. And to make it stand out just a little bit more, I'm going to give it a bit of a glowing background. To do that, I'm going to use box shadow. Just down under. There it is. I'm going to use this one. You won't see much because it's dark on dark there. But if I roll down and change that dark color, to perhaps a white, you can see it glowing in the background there. And you can adjust the strength and vertical position, everything you want here. I might take that down just a little bit. It's okay, but it's very sort of bright. So I'm going to click on the color there. This little striped or variegated slider here is opacity. I'm going to drag that down a little bit. So it's still there, but it's not quite as in your face. And obviously, if you want to put a board around that, you can do that. Now let's roll down our page and make sure it's going to stay on top of everything. 
that's great it's staying on top all the way down which is what we want if you have trouble with it not staying on top go over to your advanced back where we were down to position where we placed it here you'll find a z index if it goes behind a module slide this z index up to a nice high value until it pops up on top and what z index is if you have two elements say this section and our button here if our button has a z index of say 20 and our section has a z index of 19 and below this button will always appear on top if you switch that up to 22 and this was 20 the button was 20 the button would disappear behind it so flip your z index up if you have that problem great well that seems to be working we need to link it to somewhere also and well you don't need to but it's going to be much more effective if you do so like i say you can link to anywhere you want on or off site i've got plenty of sections here if i roll down the bottom of the page i've got a little contact form in fact let's use this one today i've got a little inline contact form there sort of thing so let's link to this so let's save our little text settings there to link to a module on a page using an anchor tag just go to where you want to link to this little section here go over to the advanced css ids and classes and we'll be coming back here later on too use css id not css class css id and we can give this little section a name you can call it what you want but it wants to be kind of unique i like it to mean something so i'm just going to call it um, eye contact for inline contact like i say you can have anything you want there it needs to be unique let's copy that now Control c to copy and we'll make our little button here link to it go into the little button content tab there's link and in the module link because we're linking as an anchor tag to a css id i need to put a hashtag in there and then the css id name that we just gave it which was eye content now obviously because we're linking on our page we don't want to open it in a new tab but if you were linking off site to somebody else's thing you could open it in a new tab that way your websites are going to stay open it's always best practice great well, we've got it linking now let's go back to our button and flip it round the other way now because we've got it in fixed position here i'm okay i can actually get to it but if you have a problem getting to it make sure your little purple button's expanded here on the bottom just click on it left click left hand side on the bottom little icon there wireframe view if you click on it it'll take you to the back end there and it's a great way if you have trouble finding a module that's been repositioned you can go in this way and find it that way there's a little text module right there like i say i'm okay in this case but if you have that problem that's how to solve it so let's go back in here now if you just want it flipped vertically without the riding changing aspect there we can do that in design we could go down to transform and you've got a rotate button here just click on that one and you'd want to rotate it around this axis as you can see it rotates that way and you could adjust your horizontal position with your horizontal offset here that's not what i want today so let's take that away and with divi if you do something you don't like what you've done just simply select it delete it it'll go back to the default as it was so we're going to use a little bit of code today and don't let that panic you any code i write as usual i'll put down below the video i'm going to go over to my advanced tab I'm going to go down to my custom css here they've added a new freeform css tab you've still got module elements tab where you've got before main element and after depending on what module you're looking at but freeform lets you add class names and more complex css so it's great so let's create our own class name here all class names have a dot or a period i'm going to call it t for text i'm going to say rotate 
so it's T-rotate. I'm going to open and close some curly brackets, and inside we can write our code. I'm going to say writing mode, writing dash mode, colon, I want it to be a vertical layer. Great. Now we need to flip it by using text orientation, T-E-X-T dash orientation, colon, I want it to be upright. So there we go along. Now it throws up a flag there saying unknown property text orientation. But I've tried this on several different browsers. I've used it on Brave, I've used it on Firefox, and I've used it on Edge. And it works absolutely fine on those too. And just to check that out, you may be thinking, well, nothing's happening now. Well, we haven't given it this class name. So let's copy our class name there, T-Rotate without the dot or period this time. Control C to copy. Just up above our custom CSS, you've got CSS IDs and classes. It's a class name this time, not a CSS ID that we used before. So we just need to paste it in there. As you can see, once I paste it in there, it's flipped it around to the vertical there. And it's staying there on our left hand side on top of all the other modules. Like I say, if it goes below a little module, just adjust your Z index in the positioning. As we said earlier, over in advanced data position, there's your Z index right there. Great, let's make sure this is gonna contact and do everything we want. I'm gonna save my changes here. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the visual builder. And there's our little tab there. Let's roll down. Yeah, it's staying where we want it to. If we roll back up, click on it. It takes us down to our little inline form there. And that's a great little feature to have on your website. Like I say, you can make it connect to any way you want. It doesn't have to be on the page. It can be off site to a different page or different website even. That's entirely up to you. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignertechtips.com. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you. I'll make a little demo video like this one. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.